you, big fat bestie in England. And uh, welcome to the new look to uh, my vlogs. First of all, sorry about the sound. Um, I can't get the uh, mic anywhere near me. So until I get a lapel mic, I'm also in the conservatory here, so it's a little bit echoey. So uh, hopefully you'll get used to it in 30 seconds or so. But, exciting news. Uh, so today, I'm gonna show you how to get cheap flights from the UK to Thailand. So if you've got a laptop, or even your phone, laptop would be better, um, then hook it up in front of you and feel free to pause this video as we go along. So I'm gonna take you through it every step of the way. I've had a few comments in my uh, section in the comments below uh, about how to get cheap flights and uh, uh, one bloke uh, was gonna be paying about 700 and something uh, pounds just before Christmas and uh, Due to uh, some of these tips, uh, he's going uh, from a regional airport uh, for £342, so that's a serious, serious saving. Uh, so the first thing you need to do, get on your browser up, whatever it is, I use Google Chrome, and look up skyscanner.net. Uh, full disclosure here, I'm not affiliated to Skyscanner or any other uh, travel booking sites. Uh, not Agoda, not Skyscanner, not anything. But we're not going to do hotels today, we're just going to do uh, the flights. So once you're on skyscanner.net, I've got my laptop in front of me, so I will be looking down from time to time. You want to be booking a return flight, I presume. And then you want to be putting in, uh, let's, for argument's sake, we're going to do this one from London, which is where I'm going to fly from. If you want to be flying uh, direct, the only direct flights uh, to Bangkok, Savannah Boom, are from London Heathrow or London Gatwick. So those are your direct flight options. If you want to fly from anywhere else in the UK, uh, then you'll be flying indirect, which may or may not be cheaper. But let's start with London to Bangkok, Savannah Boom, and then you'll see in front of you, depart and return, how many adults I'm going to put in one adults, because I presume most of us are SMTs, single male travellers. So, first thing you need to do on the depart and return box, click on your depart box and you will see an option which says whole month. So I'm looking to travel uh, pretty much for all of October. So uh, my ballpark dates, I need to, I want to be there for Halloween because Halloween's great uh, in Pathia, uh, but uh, I'm going to be flexible and that's the key to getting cheap flights, be flexible. So what we're going to be putting in is whole month. <coughs> and we're gonna put in October 2017. And on the return, because I wanna be there for Halloween, I'm going to put in November 2017. And we're gonna leave all the other options uh, unchecked. Add nearby airports, don't really wanna do that. And direct flights only, we're not gonna do that one just yet. Because at the moment, we're looking for just the cheapest flights. Then click search flights. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice as well, guys. I've, uh, been doing a couple of uh, boxing shows this weekend. I did one in Lincoln, and then I had a hell of a drive uh, to one in Plymouth, but it was a really, really good show, so it was worth it. We made loads of money for charity, always good. So here we go, it's bringing you up the calendar. And this is giving you prices all the way through the month. So for example, we've got the first to the first, um, which I think will be 31 days but we'll, we'll check that later. I need to make sure it's 30. I want to maximize my 30 day uh, stamp. Uh, I want to be as flexible as possible. So we're going to have a look at, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I've already had a look at my flights, but for I'm going to say, let's book the ones which I'm going to book today, um, which is Tuesday, the 3rd of October. And then you'll see the numbers change, the flight price numbers change on the uh, return dates. Uh, as soon as you pick a date. So play around with your dates if you're flexible. See if you can get the cheapest one um, within the boundaries. Let's say you go for two weeks. If you're flexible, a couple of dates. Mess around with it and um, try and get the cheapest flight. So the third, traveling out on the 3rd of October and coming back on the 2nd of November. And let's have a look at show flights. These indirect ones aren't massively cheap, but let's have a look. So we've set the search going. And it ticks down, it's saying checking providers, so you give it a little bit of time. And once it happens, 
the magic will start. So it's saying checking 56 out of 65 so far. And it's looking like the cheapest is going to be some kind of, yeah, Air India is the cheapest. Now, here's a travel tip as well. Um, you can rule out certain airlines. I always rule out, I always try and look for the cheapest indirect flight first and then balance it against the cheapest direct flight. My rule is the cheapest indirect flight um, has to be around about 100 quid, 100 pounds sterling cheaper than the cheapest direct flight. That's what I think the value of a direct flight is without pissing around in airports. And also, you can basically take away some airlines. For example, here we've got one from Heathrow uh, on Air India. I wouldn't fly Air India anyway. I don't like Indian airports and I don't like Chinese airports either. It's just too much hassle. So for an indirect flight, you should be looking at the likes of Emirates, Qatar, uh, Oman Air, uh, Etihad, any of the Middle Eastern airlines are pretty good to go direct with. That would be my first choice. And then any of the European airlines, um, like Finnair do uh, prices, Austrian uh, do some decent prices sometimes as well. So this one here, and another tip to look out for, another eh <coughs> eh um, to cross off. First thing you look at is the airline. Second thing you look at is how long the layover is. So the direct flight uh, from London, I think is about 11 and a half hours to get to Bangkok and it's about 13 and a half hours to get back uh, due to the winds. This one here, cheapest flight which has come up, uh, the flight out in total is 36 hours and 30 minutes. So that's approximately 24 hours longer than the direct flight, which means you're gonna have a stupidly long layover, uh, in this case in Bombay, and uh, a slightly less, but also a stupidly long layover in Delhi. Do you want that? Well, it depends if you're traveling and want to go to um, Bombay or Delhi, then maybe, uh, but I certainly don't. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find Air India and we're gonna uncheck it on the left of the screen. Uh, we're gonna, all the uh, airlines are checked, so we're gonna uncheck Air India, it'll update it to the next cheapest, which is Turkish Airlines at 393 pounds. Um, now this is a good, this isn't a bad option if you're looking to save money. Because looking at it, I can see you leave Gatwick at five o'clock. Now for me, that's pretty important because if it's an early flight, that means I need to get a hotel at Gatwick or at Heathrow the night before, and they're about 50 quid. So that's 50 quid saved uh, just there. The stops, it stops in Istanbul, fair enough, don't have a problem with that. And the total flight time out is 15 hours and 50 minutes, and the total flight time back is 16 hours and 35. Uh, my guess on that is your stopover on the way out will be about maybe two hours, two and a half hours in Istanbul on the way out, probably about an hour and a half on the way back. So we would write that down. That's not a bad option. It's not, a, not an amazing price, 393 quid. You should be looking, well, last time, for example, I paid 330 um, via Muscat uh, with Oman Air, who were really good, by the way. And as soon as they get their airport sorted out in Muscat, then I will definitely be uh, looking at Oman Air every time and see if I can get a decent price on them. So that's one to write down. You can write it down, 393 pounds, ballpark figure. Um, on the days which you have chosen. Now, the next thing you do is you uncheck the one stop and two stop boxes. And this will give you the, di the prices of the direct flights uh, from London, uh, which will either be, there's three airlines, it's EVA, EVA of Taiwan, uh, Thai Air, or British Airways. Uh, out of those three, I rank EVA the highest, and they're usually the cheapest uh, as well. EVA, are a five-star airline ranked by Skytrax, uh, British Airways, and Thai, I think, of both four. Um, I've flown on all of them before. Um, I would go EVA, BA, Thai, in that order on the three uh, airlines which fly direct. And the direct flight prices are pretty good. So if we're gonna go from London on these dates, which we are, um, then it's a no-brainer, because the EVA, the EVA flight, uh, Direct goes out at 21.35, so it's a red eye, it's an overnight flight, which is perfect for me. It gives me loads of time so I don't have to get a hotel down to uh, Heathrow. Comes back into Heathrow at 20 past seven, so I will be able to get a train 
back to rural Nottinghamshire where I live. Um, so that's not a problem either. So the flight times work out, leaving Bangkok at five past one in the afternoon, which is pretty good. So that means that I'll be doing check-in two hours before. So about 11, that means I'll have to leave Pattaya at about 10, half past nine. So it's not a lie-in, but it's not a ridiculously early uh, time to be having to uh, getting up. So that's 430 pounds. So the difference between that and the acceptable direct flight, uh, 393, is 37 quid. It's a no-brainer. Do I want to be saving 37 quid to have all the hassle of changing planes in Istanbul? Um, Turkish Airlines are a five-star airline, so the airline's good on those. But no, I don't want the hassle. I'm going to go direct. So I will book that. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to booking a flight. And it's about... Um, again, you can look up, for example, if you're from, I don't know, Manchester Way, if Manchester is your nearest airport, or Birmingham, you can look, if you've got options, you can look at those um, for the indirect flights, but you won't get any um, direct flights from any of those. Uh, and last time, in, and in general, the indirect flights are cheaper from the London airports um, by about 20, 30 quid or so. Um, so, I mean, let's say I could fly from Manchester for Oh, let's say 380 quid. Um, it's still only 50 pounds difference, so it's within, well, it's not a saving of more than 100 quid, so I'm not gonna do it. So, should I book this or should I not? Should I wait? For 430 quid, I think is a good price for a direct flight. We shall see. Maybe I'll have an announcement coming soon on this channel. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, also, just a quick one, I'm approaching uh, bleh, approaching 850, I think about 834 subscribers currently. So in the comments below, I'm now going to take some requests because I want to do something special um, for the thousandth subscriber. I don't know when it's going to be. It could be three weeks, could be four weeks. Four weeks, I'm going to go to Spain. And uh, four weeks after that, I'm going to be in Greece. So the chances are I'll either be in England, Spain, or Greece when we hit the 1,000. So I want your ideas. So please bear that in mind. That could be anywhere uh, in Europe, really, or it could even be in Berlin. That's possible. So um, any ideas, as crazy as they are, nothing to do with Lady Boys, please. Um, but anything other than that, um, whether it's crazy, nuts, rude, stupid, sensible, don't care. Give me some ideas in the comments below and then um, hopefully watch this space as I decide whether or not to book this flight. I've got my credit card ready. Need to think about it for a couple of hours. But I may be back in the next vlog with some good news. Uh, also, I'm going to make a quick vlog now about my uh, new rig, uh, which you're watching me on now, which is the Canon uh, 700D uh, with the Rode video mic, uh, which should sound great when we're doing the walk and talks. Uh, this lens uh, is the prime lens, uh, so it should be relatively good in the dark and good for like studio -y stuff uh, like this. There may be some crap going on with the autofocus, I might set it to manual for the next one. Uh, and then I'll take around the other lens, uh, which is the wide angle lens, which is a Sigma one, which I bought for the walk and talks, uh, which I like doing so much in Thailand. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Quick update from my kitchen here in England. Big Fat Bestie signing out. Vlog off.